Let's say you have monthly income statements and they're loaded to a folder. You need to transform and combine all these statements so that you can get them into this format for analysis. Or you have the trial balances for each of your company branches loaded to a folder and you need to combine them into this format for analysis. Let's see how we can do this. First, let's copy the file path of our source folder. Then in a blank workbook, let's launch our query editor. Here in our query editor, let's create a new blank query. In the formula bar, paste the file path that we just copied. Note that there is no equal sign and let's remove the double quotations. Let's call this query source folder. Next, let's create another blank query and in the formula bar, insert the equal sign and we're going to use the folder.files function. Insert the open bracket. Let's type source folder between these brackets and hit enter. And Power Query has returned a table showing each file in our folder, including the metadata for each of those files. However, we only need the latest file as that will have our latest month's income statement as well as the previous month's. So let's click on the filter next to the name column and sort these files in descending order. Next in the Home tab, click on Keep Rows and select Keep Top Rows. The number of rows we want to keep is one and click OK. And we're now left with only the latest file from our folder. Now that we have our most recent file, we need to get the contents of that file, which is here in the Content column. To access the file's content, let's go to the Add Column tab and create a custom column. Let's use the Excel.workbook function and insert the open bracket. The first argument of this function is a workbook, which is in a binary format. And that's exactly what we have in our content column. So let's select the content column and insert a comma and type false. We're using false here as we don't want the automatic promotion of headers. Insert the closed bracket and hit OK. We have this new column at the end here called custom. This is the only column we require, so let's right click and select remove other columns. Let's click on the expand icon again and select the name and data column. Let's filter the name column to show income statements only. Now, if we click to the right of table, we can see the contents of our file, but the data that we require only starts in row nine. So we need to access the data from that row. We will do this with a custom column, and we're going to use table.remove first in. Insert the open bracket, and let's select the data column as this column has our table. Insert a comma, and let's type eight, as that's the number of rows we want to remove. Insert the close bracket and hit OK. Now, if we check the table in the custom column, we've removed the first eight rows. So all we need to do is promote our headers. Let's go back into our custom column and after the equal sign, type table dot promote headers and insert the brackets. And our headers have been promoted we only need the custom column, so let's right click and select remove other columns. Now it's really tempting to click on the expand icon here, but I really would not recommend that as it's going to result in missing data when new columns are added to your source files. I go into more detail about that in this video here if you would like to check it out. I'll leave a link to it in the description also. Instead, let's click on the FX here in the formula bar so that a new step is added. And Power Query references the previous step. This is how M code works. After the equal sign, let's type table.combine. We're using this function to combine all our tables into one. Insert the open bracket. And after removed other columns, type custom in square brackets. This is the column that has our tables that we want to combine. Insert the closed bracket. Let's hit enter. And we now have all our months with the column headers promoted. Next, let's right click on the year to date column and select remove, as we don't need totals in our end query for our data analysis. Next, click on the drop down of column one 
and go to text filters. Here is where we will filter out all the rows that are totals. Let's click on does not begin with and click on advanced. We want to filter column one does not begin with total. And I've quickly filtered out the rest of these total line items using does not contain and click OK. Next in the add column tab, click on conditional column. Let's call this column categories. If the April 24 column equals nil, then our output needs to be a column, which is column one. Else if column one equals tax expense, then the output needs to be tax and click OK. And we have this new column called categories. Let's right click on categories and go to fill and click on down. And each of our line items have been correctly categorized. We still have these rows with null values for revenue, operating expenses, and other income. So let's filter them out. Let's rename column one to line item. And let's load our data to Excel. We now have our income statement ready for analysis. Let's go to our income statement folder and add June's data and go back to our query. Right click and hit refresh. And June's data updates perfectly. In our next example, we have trial balances for each branch stored in a folder. Our goal is to automatically combine these trial balances into a single table with each branch side by side and the values for the same accounts need to be aligned next to each other. Because if we check our source files, branch one has petty cash on line four and the checking account on line five. Whereas branch two does not have a petty cash line item and the checking account is on line four. And there are other numerous line items that don't line up. Let's see how we can do this. Here in our query editor, let's create a blank query. And I've copied the folder path of our source folder that contains the trial balances. So let's paste it in the formula bar. Remember to remove the double quotations and press enter. Let's call the source folder. Let's create another blank query. And in the formula bar, type equals folder.files. Insert the open bracket and type source folder. And hit enter and Power Query displays the files in our folder, let's call this query Combined Branch TBs for Trial Balances. Next, let's select the Content column, hold down the Control key and select the Name column, right-click and select Remove Other Columns. Next, let's click these double-down arrows in the Content column, it's the Combined Files icon. Here in the Combined Files dialog box, it shows the first file as the sample file. This is branch one's trial balance. We can see a preview of this data on the right here. All our files have the same file structure and column headers. If your files have different column headers, then I highly recommend you watch this video here, which shows you how to combine multiple files with inconsistent column headers. Let's click OK. When we use the combined files icon, it was a signal to Power Query to create all these helper queries, which then resulted in the end combined file here. Let's remove the change type step, as we don't need that here. We have all these different header rows for branch one, but here's the thing, if we scroll down, there's also the headers for branch two. You could filter out branch one and branch two and promote your headers. But what happens when there's branch three and four and so forth. They won't be filtered out. And the headers for branch two haven't been filtered out either. So this is not dynamic at all. Let's remove these last three steps that we just performed and head over to the transform sample file query. This is one of our helper queries designed specifically to make our work easier. It's important to note that when you're combining files and need to apply additional transformations, you should always do this in the transform sample file. Why? But before we get to that, did you know that only 9% of you watching are subscribed? If you're getting value from this video, please hit that subscribe button. 
Thank you so much, because any changes made here will automatically be applied to the final combined file. Our transform sample file is based on branch 1 data, as that's the file we selected when combining our files. Here are the steps that Power Query has performed to create this transform sample file. Let's remove the promoted headers step for now. Let's instead go to the Home tab and go to Remove Rows and click on Remove Top Rows. And the number of rows we want to remove is 2. Let's promote our headers and remove the Change Type step. We don't need the total line, so let's go to Text Filters, Begins With, and type PP as we only want the account codes. And for the account titles column, let's use the does not equal filter and click on advanced and filter out accumulated depreciation, revenue, and withholding taxes. These are all our total columns that we don't need for our analysis. Let's use Control A to select all our data and perform a change type step. So now if we check our combined data, the transformations have automatically pulled through. However, we are unable to see the branch names, so let's click on the gear icon of the Removed Other Columns step and select Name. Then click on the Expanded Table step and we can see our branch names and the month they relate to for each line item. Let's perform one more step on the name column. Let's go to the Transform tab and click on Replace Values. We want to replace the Excel extension with nothing. And click OK and now we only have the name column in the correct format. Let's send this to Excel. And select Pivot Table Report. Let's create our pivot table. Let's format this table. Let's go to our source folder and add Branch 3's trial balance here. And let's go back to our query, right click and hit refresh. And Branch 3's data updates perfectly. Let's scroll down to the last row and insert Alt equals on each of these columns. And they all add up to zero, so our end query also correctly balances. Let's say you need to create an Excel aging report showing your debtors aging. And you want to do this dynamically, so whenever your debtors receipts and invoices are updated, you want your age analysis to refresh automatically with just the click of a button. This is really easy to perform with Power Query. Watch this video next to see exactly how to do this.